Hello, I'm Dr. Annalene Weston, Dental Legal Consultant at Dental Protection. Welcome to Risk Bites, a series of podcasts created specifically for dental practitioners in Australia. Risk Bites looks at the key dental legal risks and issues affecting dental practitioners across Australia and provides helpful advice and guidance on how to steer clear of them, leaving you free to provide safe and high quality dental care for your patients. In this episode, we're going to be chatting with my colleague, Mrs. Anita Kemp, case manager at Dental Protection, about why validation is so very important in dental practice. Now, Anita, for full clarity, we're not talking about validation in terms of our sterilisation processes today, are we? No, Annalene, we're talking about validation through the lens of human reaction and response. Go on. It's human nature to pay attention to events, issues, situations that are meaningful to us. These experiences can be recalled with fondness or disappropriation. And while each situation is open to interpretation, a person's experience, the narrative and recollection is their own. And through their own filter of bias, of course. Yeah, exactly. We have all experienced moments of invalidation, whether it be a manager who fails to acknowledge that the constructive feedback they delivered feels more like personal assault, or a critical parent who questions why you feel so threatened by them when you try to assert yourself and prevent them from derailing their appointment. Failing to validate or being dismissive of a person's subjective experience implies that their experience and or response is inaccurate insignificant or unacceptable. As you would understand, Annalene, this is very upsetting and can lead to disruption in how we feel, a breakdown in relationships and at times conflict. Yeah, I absolutely understand. So can you walk us all through some of those feelings, please, Anita? Absolutely. Just take a moment to cast your mind back to an occasion where you have experienced invalidation, so felt diminished, dismissed or gaslit. When we reflect on this moment in time, we often feel uncomfortable, perhaps with an unpleasant sensation in our throat or the pit of our stomach. This is an echo of our feeling of the day. If you reflect on what happened after you were made to feel this way, it's likely that you disconnected from the conversation as you felt your boundaries had been crossed or because you felt unwilling or unable to continue. Yeah, it's a horrible way to feel, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And it's regrettable that we often inadvertently can make our patients feel this way when we fail to listen to their concerns. The title of practitioner and healthcare provider elicits a degree of societal trust. Our overarching code of conduct clearly states that practitioners should be ethical, trustworthy and display qualities such as integrity, truthfulness, dependability and compassion. It also outlines the conduct that the public can expect from a health practitioner and their moral obligation to uphold an ethical standard of care. So as health professionals, the last thing we want is for our patients to perceive us as incompetent, uncaring or dismissive. Absolutely, Annalene. While dismissing patients' concerns and experience can be unintentional, we must remain cognizant that what is seemingly insignificant to one person is often perceived entirely different by the person on the receiving end and can result in emotive reactions as opposed to the considered or rational response we were anticipating. Yeah, I think we've all experienced this, haven't we? And I absolutely recognise that there's a problem here, Anita. So where does validation come in? It comes as in a technique which can be used to help neutralise heightened emotions and maintain a connection point even in times of distress. Validation is the act of helping someone feel heard and understood. Validation helps regulate emotions. Knowing that you're heard and understood is a powerful experience. It helps build understanding with others and aids in effective communication. According to Karen Hall, PhD, validation is the recognition and acceptance of another person's thoughts, feelings, sensations and behaviours is understandable. Yeah, that's a really good definition because it also doesn't say you necessarily agree with them. You just recognise and accept it. And I can see that validation would be an incredibly helpful element after, for example, an adverse outcome. It is. Patients inherently place a level of trust in our skill and knowledge as dental practitioners and it's upsetting for all involved when there's a deviation from the anticipated or expected outcome or endpoint. As you've said, Annalene, this may be a result of an adverse outcome, the unexpected failure of treatment and or a breakdown in communication. It doesn't really matter because when patients experience treatment care that falls outside of the anticipated standard, there is an expectation that the process of having their concerns heard will be fair, reasonable and empathetic. That's often a planned conversation, isn't it, Anita, when we know something's gone wrong. However, 
validation can be useful at other times too, can it not? It can. For example, when a patient brings their concerns to a practitioner or to the practice, you need to remember that for them to do this, there is a level of vulnerability that's required of them because it's easy to forget this and instead see them as their aggressor. As a practitioner or a person in receipt of the complaint, we should aim to mirror a similar level of vulnerability by acknowledging the courage it takes to firstly raise the concern in the hope of resolution and then attempt to address these concerns with the person. It could be as simple as saying, thank you for raising this with me. This is important enough for you to reach out and I want to understand what's going on for you. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it, Anita? Because as practitioners, we believe our patients always want us to project confidence. But of course, sometimes this really isn't the case. They need to see our humanity too and to know they're speaking to a real person who cares about them and their point of view. That's right. In a situation where a patient has come to you with a problem, they may perceive confident you as arrogant or uncaring. They want to talk to a more vulnerable version of their dental practitioner. Vulnerability as a practitioner can be conveyed simply by being present and by giving your complete attention to the person who is struggling and giving it to them in a non-judgmental way. It can also be helpful to help the person understand how they're feeling by helping them to label it. Isn't labelling a people bad though, Anita? It certainly can be, Annaline. But I'm talking about assisting a person who in that moment feels overwhelmed. Because if we're able to better identify and label their emotion, we can help them infer and understand how they may be feeling. Rather than making assumptions, it's important that we check in with this person. Sounds great. Can you give me an example? Of course. A good example would be to say something like, I completely understand that this is overwhelming and that this has been really upsetting for you. Is that right? This enables the patient to better articulate their own emotional feelings. Of course, getting these things off your chest and critically feeling heard or validated and doing so can be incredibly cathartic and empowering for them on a personal level. It sounds really straightforward, Anita, but I suspect like many things we discuss in our podcast series, it's actually harder than it sounds. Yeah, quite often we can struggle with our own self-validation, which in turn makes it very difficult for us to validate emotions and feelings of other people. Instead of normalising or recognising emotion reactions that anyone might have, we instead move to minimising the issue or concern, cloaking it in a language such as, it's not that bad or that's not that uncommon. While this may in fact be true, it can appear that we're leveraging our professional knowledge to minimise their experience and at times hiding behind the power and balance that exists within the professional and patient relationship. Failure to validate the patient's experience and point of view can be interpreted as dismissive or gaslighting behaviour and the current literature suggests that being ignored or dismissed by the healthcare professionals is one of the most common complaints heard by patient advocates. So not only is failing to validate how someone feels not a kind and human way to manage their concerns, but it can also have significant deleterious consequences on us and our registrations. It can. Strong clinical practice relies heavily on the therapeutic relationship and all relationships are bound by communication, trust, respect, intent and humility. Our patients are likely to judge and base our clinical skill upon how well we care for them and our willingness to help. Bearing this in mind, we might consider challenging any negative perceptions we have about the complaints process and reframe it as an opportunity to consolidate and strengthen mutual trust, respect and understanding between practitioner and patient whilst dispatching our duty of care, all of which are essential requirements for any successful therapeutic relationship and in accordance with our professional obligations. Moreover, we might acknowledge that ignoring or dismissing these contacts is in fact a missed opportunity to resolve any initial concerns in these early stages, avoiding further escalation and in most instances a significantly challenging and stressful experience for all. Yeah, thanks Anita. That's certainly given us plenty to think about. And thank you all for listening. And we do hope this podcast was helpful to you and we look forward to sharing more guidance with you in the future. If you like Dental Protection Podcasts and you'd like to hear more, Please subscribe and leave a review.